I actually um, started playing music when I was in my teens, and um, uh, from my 20s on until about my 40s, I was uh, uh, a band leader for many jazz fusion bands along the way. Uh, my roots had been uh, Ma Vishnu Orchestra, Return to Forever, all the fusion bands of the 70s, which impressed me and inspired me to play music. So I went out and started bands trying to play their music, which I did a lot of covers of Ma Vishnu Orchestra and stuff like that. Uh, coming up to more recently, uh, in the last, I'd say, six years, um, I started drifting more into the smooth jazz genre. Uh, recorded four out. This next album coming out will be the fourth album in four years. Uh, the three previous albums uh, with the Ghost Jazz Trios uh, started in 2020. Um, that was the first album. And uh, 2017 is when I started um, the whole concept of the Ghost Jazz Trio. So really, I've just been playing, you know, jazz fusion kind of rock music all that time. And then recently getting into the smooth jazz genre. It's been great because uh, it really gives you a, a, a or a wide audience, more diversified, and um, uh, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the album, but I want to go ahead and uh, let Dean, the producer of the album, arranged all the music on the album, uh, tell you a little bit about himself as well. Well, hi, as you said, my name's Dean Brown, and uh, I've been playing uh, kind of professionally, I guess, since I was about 13. Um, it, uh, it, started with uh, my mom was a singer and uh, and there was always musicians around the house so I kind of I came by it honest you know um, and uh, let's see I I had uh, a bunch of bands when I was in high school and stuff I always was kind of a, a band leader of uh, kind of by default um, uh, but uh, I became interested in jazz and uh, decided to uh, to go to Berkeley uh, in Boston and met a lot of uh, people that I still play with there. But uh, from that point, I moved to New York, and then things started happening. I started playing with uh, Billy Cobham, um, and he mentioned that you know uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. Billy was the uh, was the uh, drummer with Mahavishnu Orchestra, amongst uh, many other projects that he does, uh, but uh, I played um, I played with Marcus Miller, with uh, David Sanborn, Roberta Flack, uh, um, a, just a, a ton of, uh, uh, I've, I've been fortunate in, in that respect to get a chance to play with some of the greatest musicians in the world, and uh, um, it's helped me as a producer to, uh, to sort of, be a, uh, a little more than a fly on the wall because I'm 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 playing, but I got to experience how uh, producers did things well and did things badly, and uh, and so uh, um, I tried to learn from that, and uh, and I got in much more into producing over the last say 10 years or whatever, and uh, I'm on a, a couple of hundred records as as a as a guitarist, and I have my own. Uh, solo career um, uh, that I've made uh, five or six records so uh, th that's basically me in a nutshell. I actually came uh, to uh, the studio we're in now to talk to Alan who's the uh, engineer uh, for my last three albums. Well it was probably back in 2020 I started working with James he came in here he said look I've got uh, enough for three days want to come in lay something down Let's do it. I said, okay, fine, let's go. So he comes in, we did that. Six months later, I think he came back and did another album. And he just kept coming back, you know? So uh, I had been speaking with Dean Brown uh, one day about another project we've been working on. And uh, it just so happened that, you know, James was coming in an hour later to meet with me. And he starts talking about, hey, we're ready to do another album. And I'm thinking, well, we just did one, you know? So we're ready to do another one, okay. But this time I want to get a producer involved. So I said, okay, let me see. I was just talking to a guy about an hour ago, let me see if he's interested. So I, I gave Dean a call and let him know that a guy would be calling him and then uh, they hooked up and here we are. I hadn't really heard of Dean Brown or knew of him 
uh, by name, um, even though I probably listened to him. Uh, so he brought him up on Wikipedia. Well, I knew right then when you, somebody comes up on Wikipedia, there's somebody because you know, <laughs> I'm not on Wikipedia, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, he, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he told him. He, he said, "This guy, you know, he works great. Uh, he, he knows his stuff." And then I said, oh, "Okay, wow, okay, he's played with Billy Cobb. He knows his stuff. Let's let let me talk to him." And and uh, so what he did is he contacted uh, Dean. Had Dean uh, contact me, we uh, exchanged a couple uh, phone calls and decided to meet and we met at a hotel lobby, uh, sat down and went over the whole concept, told him what I was looking for and he understood right away and of course he did his own research kind of looking into the past albums and kind of the musicianship and all that kind of stuff to consider coming aboard and one of the things was that Dean was uh, could see right away, and uh, which uh, was great, is that he said, this album needs to um, have the guitar tone, and the guitar is the focus of the album. Uh, whereas my past albums were more ensemble-based formats. This one was really to be have me as the focus uh, and the songs. So uh, yeah, so he decided to come on board. He did all the arranging of the songs. I would send him some scratch tracks and he would come up with some uh, nice mock uh, mock-ups of the song send them over of course they sounded great so uh, uh, that was that process getting the songs together and also he formatted the songs so they all showcased the guitar rather than the other instruments he made I think the instruments become uh, more supportive of that and I think so through his his uh, understanding what we needed to do and relaying it to everybody else, uh, we achieved, I think, exactly what we were supposed to. And the album's great, I mean, as far as that goes. Um, so the process was, once we got all that, the songs figured out, uh, it was to pick the personnel. And um, uh, we got some suggestions from the engineer, which is Alan uh, Sanderson, and um, Dean went ahead and did his research on them to see if they were going to uh, be a good fit. And uh, we selected the right personnel for the album. And uh, then we came in the studio and, and recorded it live. That was one of the things uh, Dean was real adamant about was, let's record live, let's keep the, the organic vibe of a, a real band, especially nowadays since a lot of things are done remotely and uh, digitally you know people record something and they send it in and then they just uh, you know hook, hook it on the recording he wanted this to sound like you know we we're a band playing and I think that comes across in the recording uh, it's one of the things that I like about the recording uh, uh, the most everybody brought their own thing to the table which was really great I don't know if some of these guys play live with James so that was really helpful to be able to bring them into the studio with a film familiarity but I think that uh, everybody kind of had their own position and everybody really excelled at what they do so it's great. As James said uh, you know we we had a couple of conversations where he really outlined you know what he was trying to do and uh, for me that was great because uh, as a producer uh, if the artist doesn't have a clear vision about what they want it's <laughs> it's really hard you know to uh, to sort of manufacture something out of nothing um, but uh, but uh, James is uh, has a very, very clear vision of what he's trying to do and what he's trying to accomplish, which um, for some people might be like, oh man, you know, I, that doesn't give me any creative freedom. But for me, it was the ac exact opposite. It was like, oh wow, now I have um, parameters that give me a, a, a much better um, focus as to how to uh, to attack each song um, and, and manifest it so 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 that it comes out um, the way he wants it to but not only the way he wants it to the way I want it to which has to do with making sure that uh, you know even though we're doing the contemporary jazz or some people call it the smooth jazz uh, uh, sort of thing or genre I still want it to have some honesty and uh, I still want it to f um, to feel like it's heartfelt and that it's uh, and that it's just like the record's called Groove and Smooth. So I was like, one thing's for sure, everything's got a groove, everything, you know? 
every part, everything that James plays has to groove, everything I play, everything everybody plays has to groove. And, and uh, like uh, James said, we did our due diligence. Um, uh, he had already been playing with, with uh, Nate Brown, who's a fantastic bass player, uh, one of the top calls here in, in San Diego. And uh, I didn't know um, uh, uh, Trace, uh, our drummer, before, but I, as we said, uh, you know, we listened to him and um, I, I listened to him and I went, wow, this guy would be great for it. But I knew once we played the first day, I was like, man, this guy is one, actually one of my favorite drummers now, you know, so uh, that worked out really well because without, if you're making a record that's called Groove and Smooth, you better, the drummer better be killing, you know? So um, that's basically uh, uh, the genesis of how we started the, uh, the process. And we can talk a little later, I guess, about um, the actual nuts and bolts of composing, you know? Yeah, and also too, uh, Chase Pato, the keyboardist uh, that's on there, he was on my previous uh, two albums. Um, and uh, he's also one of the top calls here in San Diego uh, as far as keyboards. Very, very good. He's just got a lot of soul. He almost has, to me, almost like a bluesy, you know, yeah. uh, soulful feel to well, his plays, you know, his playing. I know. I, I yeah. felt like, uh, uh, you know, when I heard him play, I said, wow, this, you know, this young man is really soulful, but, but he's got a lot of chops and he has a musicality and he's a really, really, really great improviser. He really under understands how the um, concept of telling a story. And each one of these songs, we, even though they're, again, in the smooth jazz genre, we still wanted to have these short stories, four minutes long, you know, and, uh, and he was capable of building uh, solos that were pertinent to the song. Um, a lot of times when you hear people solo, they they just play a, a solo like it has nothing to do with <laughs> with the music. Mm -hmm. But he's he's uh, just a revelation. So it was a pleasure working with him as well. And the thing is, is that as, as Dean said, that's another thing I, which I missed uh, uh, when we were discussing the first discussing the album. Uh, and Dean was always repeated throughout the whole process, which was like a four almost a five month process of recording is tell a story, the songs have to tell a story, your solos have to tell a story, everything has to tell a story because again, like he said, a lot of players play, they play a lot of notes or they play with their playing, but there's, it doesn't say anything. They're just maybe even using chops that they've been playing for years just to, because they know it's in a certain key and play it. Because I remember I was doing a couple solos and he would be sitting there and he'd say, okay, do it again. I do it again, do it again. And then when he heard the right story, then he was like, okay, that says something. That's the one we're going to use. That's it, saying. And the th good thing about Chase and having a seasoned player like that is he was able to tell his story like on the first take, really. But we always took extra takes just to, to make him happy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but for me, it was like it, I, it, I was still learning to understand the songs. Because when someone, a producer, I'd never worked for with a producer, they take the song and they take your concept and they broaden it, almost like a mini movie. Okay, so now I have to understand it. So I would play with it, trying to apply who I am to the song because it's not just my song, it's, it's the story now. And uh, I'll say that was actually a learning experience and elevated my playing and understanding of playing music uh, more and it's actually helped me be a better player so not only did i get a really good album out of this but i also became a better player out of it and more in touch with who i am as a musician and plus having a producer of uh, dean's caliber of his background and who he is he's an educator you know he's played with all the top players in the world um, he, to have someone validate what you do and actually play on it and actually you know, put the energy that he's put into it has elevated me in many more ways than just the, the album and what I'm trying to do monetized wise with it and creatively. So uh, yeah, and having these other players too, they're, they were also able to uh, play their best 
uh, with the op, you know with the way it was formatted. So Dean was able, as a producer, to bring out the best in everyone. I think because I've played with these guys and I've heard them play in different situations. They've I've never heard them play as good as they played on this album. And I'm not dissing their playing. I'm just saying. It was, it just elevated everybody's playing. So the inspiration of having someone like Dean actually help co-write the songs, arrange the songs, and pull everything together, herding all the cats together to, to play, which is not easy to do in itself, uh, was amazing to watch and be a part of. I felt like I was part of something bigger than me. It wasn't just about me. I'm just an integral part of it, you know? So uh, yeah, pretty interesting. One of the things I've, um, I think I've accomplished as a musician, the most important thing is I've found my own voice and I found a way to tell a story with my own voice. And to me, that's really what being a musician is about it to be, for me, you know, to be there and be able to do that. And then again, having Dean format the songs so that I'm able to do that, it gave me all that freedom, even though it was structured, uh, very structured, it was, uh, it did the opposite, like Dean was saying earlier, it allowed me to actually be freer, you know, and express myself more. So, yeah. Right, you feel like you have a foundation, somewhere, yeah. something that you can, you know, right. that you can plant your feet on so you don't feel like you're on quicksand. You exactly, know? and, yeah. and uh, again, having someone of Dean's experience knowing all that, it transfers to you and it gives you that, uh, you know, that oh, it's okay, just do what you do, Everything, it's going to be fine, and then you do it and you go, yeah, that's fine, you know, so, yeah. James, I've never uh, experienced writing in this way before, so this was an interesting challenge. Um, as James said, he's not really, uh, what's kind of cool about him is that he's not uh, really a blues-oriented uh, kind of player, which is a... Uh, um, uh, breath of fresh air really uh, uh, in this genre because so many things are this sort of uh, R&B blues. Um, that is, that's not to say that we didn't have those elements in the, in the, in the writing, but James, it, it, he would send me um, some chord changes, a tempo, and the form that he wanted. And that's just, I was like, wow, that's, I've never worked like that before. And so it was really a fun to try to uh, sort of craft these, um, these songs within that format. Uh, it, uh, you know, write melodies that followed that form that he wanted and then, uh, and then come up with grooves that followed the form and uh, it was just, and it's very interesting, but there's very few instances where I changed the harmony. The harmony was all, all coming from him and then uh, I would just sort of enhance it to a certain degree. And so it was a, a very interesting process and uh, um, one that I really enjoyed and had uh, a great time. And, and all the other guys, Trace and, and Chase and Nate, um, and Alan embraced the mission, you know, so it was really, really uh, a very rewarding experience. I'm hoping for everybody involved. We had our first session, we recorded the first single, which is on the groove that came out uh, uh, in October of 2022. Uh, Dean called me. Uh, I think it was the day after that session and he said, hey James, would you mind if I played on the album, you know, rhythm guitar and that would give you more freedom to solo and do melodies and and then I said, yeah, that'd be great, you know, I mean, uh, it's Dean wants to play in it and he felt that was an essential part of the process. So having that happen too was like, that was like a magic moment, you know, that was something. Yeah, that, that was cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, to have him call and say, I think the music was at that place where he would want to be involved at that level, again, 
it just validates the well again it's all about serving the music so the idea was saying, like hey yeah. we need some we need some rhythm guitar here mm -hmm. oh i i know how to do that oh, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah so and it worked so, yeah, yeah it worked yeah yeah, yeah. I have a marketing partner, which is smoothjazz.com, uh, Global Radio, Sandy Shore. She um, recommended to come out with a single, and then uh, just before the album release, come out with a second single. So uh, basically what happens is that single goes out and you use it to promote the full album. And uh, it did really well in the charts. It debuted in the top 100. Uh, you know, it's, it's gone as high as uh, number 10 on the charts. The first single, which is which was uh, great, and uh, then the second single, which is just released uh, this week, uh, "Sound of Wood." Um, that one will kind of venture the same way. It'll it'll come out on all streaming platforms. Actually, when the album comes out, but for now, it's going to be uh, on radio, which it'll be on uh, smoothjazz.com and then Guitar Radio One. Uh, the new label. Um, I just uh, signed with a couple weeks ago um, was another validation for the quality of the album. I sent um, it to a few labels. I uh, actually got uh, three responses that were positive, um, but the one that I chose to go with, which is Go Records, Guitar One Records, they were uh, the most uh, artist friendly. And as Dean can tell you, because he's had a lot more experience with uh, the suits part of the business, the whole corporate uh, run part of the business, it's hard to find labels that will uh, be supportive of the musician and put them first. So, ha you know, partnering with them has been great too. So the label will also be a marketing tool for the album. really have two rules that pertain to music. Um, one is it has to feel good and the other one is it has to be beautiful. And so if I attempt to uh, endeavor to follow that sort of North Star, then uh, um, usually good things happen. And in this case, uh, you know, a great thing happened. I think it's, you know, uh, uh, I think this is a really, really nice, um, a collection of, of songs that go well together and are, you know, and stand alone, you know, by themselves. And uh, like I said, the process was, was just great. Everyone was all in trying to make this really, uh, really good for James. And James was all in trying to make it really good for us and, and making it, uh, um, a really good professional and personal experience. So there is that. Yeah, and easy. The, the process has been really easy. Uh, when you work with seasoned musicians uh, too, that's the, the, the nice thing about this project for me. It was, a, it was more of a, almost a celebration every time we got together to record a song or whatever we had to do. Uh, it wasn't like, uh, you know, I have to go and do this or do that. It was like, I was looking forward to it. You know, and uh, it's still continuing. This started, you know, back in September or October when we met um, to s discuss it. And it's, you know, with the videos and the interview and things like that, it's still, and that shows you the, um, to me, the quality of the body of work. To me, this is like, and I told Dean this, uh, I've listened to a lot of music in my life. This is actually one of my favorite albums. I don't get tired of it. You know, I mean, it's like I hear something new every time. It says something to me new every time. And I think it will to other people too. And, yeah. you know, it's a great body of work, you know. You know, what was, uh, what, what was funny about, uh, you know, to speak to uh, the joy that was, that, that was in the room. Uh, we finished the record and then James said, you know what, I got this one other tune that I'd like to I'd like to do you know and so everybody was like oh great you know because we get to go get back in the studio again yeah. you know and it turned out to be this song sound of wood which ends up <laughs> being yeah. this single yeah. which is like you know it's yeah, kind it was, of a, it was an afterthought yeah. in fact I sent six songs 
to uh, Sandy Shore of smoothjazz.com who was going to debut the sing next single and this song wasn't even included in that but when I sent her the full I sent her the full album and we were both kind of in kind of blown away because it, for me it was like not an afterthought but it was a ballad it was you know f almost five minutes long it didn't fit any of the perimeters in my mind uh, in our minds about Shows what, what we know right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and now it's like the single it's gonna have a video and it's you know it could be the song you know um, that people wish they had you know it's like when you make a movie you don't know if it's ever gonna make it and all of a sudden it becomes a thing you know that they've watched for 20 years and 20 sure. years and I think this song's gonna be that song I, for some reason it's turning out to be it's got its own story behind it you know the other songs were part of the album this wasn't it's like the the runt you know the of the litter and it just kind of we we snuck it in at the end and now it's the showstopper yeah <laughs> <so now. laughs>